Good morning. So before we really begin this morning, uh, we're going to take just a few minutes to, to look at and honor some of our high school graduates, because this is what we're going to call Graduation Sunday. I know for the most part, I think all of you have graduated technically already, but this is our time to, to spend just a few minutes to honor our graduates. And so we have four high school graduates uh, with us this morning, and the first one is Colin Haas. Uh, Colin has been uh, a steady and stable and uh, uh, si uh, significant part of, of Bible class every Sunday morning, and I've grown to really appreciate what he has had to say uh, when, he, when, he, when he speaks. Um, Colin has graduated out of Haas Academy, which I think most of you know is just homeschooled, um, but it's still a good joke. And uh, he will be attending Ohio University in the fall. That's a misnomer because he has already been attending Ohio uh, university for a while it has a quite a bit of credit accumulated so uh, Colin we're, pr we're proud of you and uh, Colin's going to be attending uh, to pursue a degree in engineering um, second we have Keeley husband uh, Keeley has also been around about as long as I have uh, actually I think uh, me and Sarah will have been here about one year and like next week and I think uh, Keeley started coming around at some point similar and so, Keely, it's been good to get to know you over this last year, uh, and we had the great privilege to, to watch you get baptized, and that was a, one of the greatest blessings of our year so far. Um, Keely's graduated out of Lancaster High School and it pl plans to attend Ohio University Lancaster, pursuing a degree in early childhood education. Uh, next, we have Chloe, Chloe Thompson. Um, Chloe is graduating out of Fairfield Union High School with a 4.0 which is very commendable. And I think a lot of you who have been around here long enough, you, you've seen Chloe grow up. She's been around here for a very long time. And so uh, seeing you succeed has been a great blessing for us. Uh, you received a full ride scholarship to, to Ohio University Lancaster, where you, she plans to start attending in the fall. So we're very proud of you as well. Finally, we have Eli Wurzel. Um, Eli has been uh, this, this pillar of, of work ethic. Every time I've interacted with him, that's become very apparent. Uh, Eli has completed his freshman year um, and as well has racked up quite a bit of college credit, uh, which is a shame because I don't think he intends to use it. But he's been working, owning his own business already and is looking into uh, trade school as an electrician, which frankly, I, I kind of like because that, that's part of my background as well. Um, also briefly, I think we need to mention some of our college grads. We have. Uh, um, Alexandra Duncan, who has got her uh, nursing degree, and she's accepted a position at the Fairfield Medical Center in the labor and delivery unit. We have uh, Nathan Hawes, who's graduated uh, with his master's in mechanical engineering, or rather he will at the end of the summer, and he's accepted a position in, uh, with Lockheed Martin. And then uh, Nicholas has graduated with his, uh, with his bachelor's degree in engineering as well and has also accepted a position uh, at Star Plastics. And so we're very proud of y'all as well. At this time, uh, I've asked Steve Starner, one of our elders, to come and say a prayer for our graduates. Uh, I'll just kind of reiterate, oh, I, can, I can't say it. Um, what Rick said, he kind of, uh, but thank you, Rick, but uh, there might be a couple of things I can add. But uh, yeah, we're definitely proud of all you, all you guys, and uh, we definitely want the best for you. So let's, uh, we'll go to God again for your behalf. Uh, Father, we are so thankful for the day, and in this time that we can recognize uh, our seniors and those who are graduating and their achievements in their lives. And, and, and as Rick had mentioned too, it's, it's great that, uh, you know, we're, we're a part of them and they're part of us, and, and uh, we hope to continue to be uh, with them in the future. And we pray your uh, special blessings on their new adventures. And, and some have been mentioned, and we're uh, so glad that uh, you uh, have helped them in their position so far and, and for their future. And, and as, as Rick also mentions, that please help them not to forget about you and your will for their lives. And uh, this is a big deal as they grow up and, um, and are faced with many things and and we just pray that they'll uh, look to you for wisdom for direction for 
for uh, comfort and and we just pray that uh, you would uh, just be with them. And also, as Mom mentioned, about uh, the parents and a new chapter in their lives and maybe some empty nesters. And, and uh, it's not easy always in each phase, but I'm sure they're proud. I'm sure that uh, they're praying always for their uh, best interest. And, and Father, we just pray that you continue to be with them and be with us. And thank you again for their achievements. Thank you for their example. And pray that they'll be a good example to those around us wherever they uh, end up. And Father, we pray all these things in Jesus' name. And amen. Thank you, Steve. All right. So now we can get to the lesson. Now, this morning, I prepared a lesson. And if I'm being completely honest, it is, it is for you graduates. Uh, this is prepared with you in mind. And it's, it's for you. That's not to say it's not for everybody else, because it is. But we're going to be talking about that, that transition into something new. And that transition into something new is something that everybody in this room has faced, or will face, or will face again shortly. Um, all of us have transitioned from one part of the life into the next, whether that's been from a job to a new job, uh, from having kids in the home to having kids leave the home, to uh, our own graduations that we've all faced and that we've all experienced. And so uh, there's plenty in here for everybody. But no, I'm talking to the graduates as I talk. Um, graduation is an important part of life. Uh, graduation is an accomplishment. And you need to understand that. And you need to uh, recognize you have achieved something. It's not insignificant. You've done something great. Um, they also represent that time of change, that time of transition. Uh, what you have been experiencing in your life so far is about to change. It might not change immediately. It might not change, you know, in the next months, but in the next year, in the next two years, in the next three years, what your life looks like now and what your look, life looks like then is going to be pretty significantly different. Some of you are looking at jobs, and so you're going to be entering into a workforce. Some of you are looking at college, and you're going to be entering into this different academic atmosphere in which you have a lot more freedom and you can do what you want. Uh, some of you are going to be moving out of your parents' home and you're going to be getting roommates and apartments and experiencing rent, stuff like that. These are significant changes. Um, and so as you're about to go into something new, uh, we need to recognize these things. Uh, this morning, we're going to draw some comparisons. Uh, in Deuteronomy, uh, Moses is speaking to the Israelites as the Israelites are about to enter into somewhere new. After 40 years of wandering in the wilderness, the Israelites have finally come to the end. They are about to finally enter into that promised land, and it's going to be this time of transition. And so that's what Moses is doing in many ways. He's preparing them for as they enter into something new. Um, this morning, we're going to be looking at a big chunk of text. We're not going to be reading all of it word for word, but we're going to be looking at Deuteronomy chapter 6 through Deuteronomy chapter 11 and drawing out some of these main points that Moses is going to be teaching those Israelite people as they enter into this time of transition. And we're going to be looking at what he has to say to them and trying to apply them to ourselves. And really, if there is one thesis, if there is one thing that Moses is going to be teaching those Israelites, it's this idea that you must obey God and prosper. As you enter into this new place, obey God, and prosper. So like I said, we're not going to read every verse, but we're going to read sections and try to get the gist of what Moses is trying to teach these people. So read with me, if you will, chapter 6, verses 1 through 9. Now this is the commandment, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God has commanded me to teach you, that you might do them in the land where you are going over to possess it, so that you and your son and your grandson might fear the Lord your God and keep all of his statutes and his commandments which I have commanded you all the days of your life, that, and that your days shall be prolonged. O Israel, you should listen and you should be careful to do it, that it may be well with you and that you might multiply greatly, just as the Lord your God your Father has promised you, in a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your might. These are the words which I am commanding to you today. Um... <clears throat> These are the words that I am commanding to you today that shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your sons. You shall talk of them when you sit in your homes and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign upon your hand 
and upon the fronts of your foreheads. You shall write them on your doorposts of your house and on your gates. Um, this is a somewhat famous passage. This is what a lot of Jewish people will call the Shema. It's, a, it's an often quoted and often memorized passage of, of scripture. But what it's essentially saying is it's, it's a reminder. It's a reminder of their covenant that they had made with God. Uh, they had made this covenant that essentially said, uh, if you follow me and if you do my will, then I will bless you. And if you uh, do not follow me and if you do not do my will, follow my will, then, then you will be cursed. Then you will not receive the blessings that I promised. It's a reminder of that blessing. And so it's also specifically a call to remember those words. Um, it talks about binding these things that you have heard. Uh, bind them on your hearts. Bind them on your hands. Bind them on your forehead. Do not forget the teachings that you have been given. And so, all of you, at some level, have grown up in the church. You have grown up with teaching, with biblical knowledge being given to you. And you've grown up with this. It's something you've known. Um, some of you have that solid foundation within your faith. Some of you have been at church since you were born, just about, right? And so you know what the Bible has to say. You know God's commandments. And you've lived, out, you've lived it out. You've lived out God's commandments doing what he wanted. Um, you have been taught, you have been trained, and you know what you need to do. And like the Israelites, you are rooted in God's word. And so at this time, think about this, and do not forsake what you already know. You have a foundation in God's word. You have a foundation knowing Jesus. Don't forget about that foundation as you enter into something new. You're going into a place that's different, but your foundation should stay the same. Remain focused on God. Remain focused on Christ. And uh, remain focused on being obedient. Because the, the thesis still stays the same. Obey God and prosper as you already have so far within your life. Chapter 7 continues down the same path. Uh, chapter 7 is more of a warning. Uh, chapter 7 is teaching us don't be led astray by what you're going to face. Stay obedient and stay with God and prosper. Uh, read with me chapter 7, verses 1 through 6, and then we'll jump around to a couple other verses. But start with chapter 7, verses 1 through 6. When the Lord your God brings you into this land where you are entering to possess it, and clears away many nations before you, the Hittites, the Gerashites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations that are greater and stronger than you. And when the Lord your God delivers them before you, you shall defeat them, and you shall utterly destroy them, and you shall make no covenant with them, and you shall show them no favor. Furthermore, you shall not intermarry with them, you shall not give your daughters to their sons, nor shall you take their daughters for your sons. You will turn your sons away from... For if you do, they will turn your sons away from following me and serve other gods. And the anger of the Lord will be kindled against you, and he will quickly destroy you. By thus you shall do to them. You shall tear down their altars, you shall, you shall smash their pillars, you shall hew down their ashram and burn their graven images with fire. For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for his own possession out of all the people who are on the face of the earth. Uh, jump down to chapter to verses 12 and 13. And it shall come about, because you listened to these judgments, and you kept them, and you did them, that the Lord your God will keep you with his covenant and with his loving kindness, which he swore to your forefathers. He will love you and bless you and multiply you, and he will bless the fruit of your womb and the fruit of the ground. He will bless the fruit of your womb and bless the ground with grain and new wine and oil, and increase your herds and the young of your flock, and the land which he swore to your forefathers to give you. Here we see Moses transition into a warning. He's telling the Israelites all about these things that they will face as they go into this new land. They're going to face all of these Canaanite people, these people that have been incredibly wicked and incredibly sinful. Uh, and Moses' warning is clear. Do not become a part of that people. Don't take in their culture. Don't intermarry with them. Don't become like them. He says instead, destroy their idols. Destroy these, these places of idolatry that are going to tempt you, and that are going to uh, try to lead you away, away from God. Moses is warning them about these new temptations. Um, he's saying, do not be a part of that sinful lifestyle that you are going to see. Instead, avoid these temptations and allow God to bless you. Avoid the temptations that you are seeing as you go out, and instead return to that foundation you have. Obey God and prosper. 
This is going to be very true for y'all, you guys as well. As you graduate and as you go into this new place, as you go into this new circumstances, you're going to find you're going to have a lot more opportunity and a lot more temptation. If you move out from your parents' place, or when you do, if not soon than later, what you're going to find is uh, it's a lot easier to sin when you have nobody, uh, when your parents aren't in the house, when you can get away with it. And that leads to new temptations. You're going to find if you go out into a workplace that a lot of the times co-workers are not wholesome. You're going to be exposed to these people that are inherently a little bit more sinful than high school students. Um, you're going to go to a college campus in which you're going to be around a lot of people your same age who are going to be experimenting with sinful things. And there's going to be pressure for you to do that as well. If you're on a college campus, you're also going to be taught things, potentially, that are not according to God's will. You're going to face new things, new temptations as you go out. And you're going to have a choice. Are you going to accept these things? Are you going to be led astray by these temptations, by these, by these idols, these false idols that are out there? Or are you going to reject them, and are you going to stay obedient? And that's what we're called to do. That's what Moses is calling the Israelites to do, and that's what we must do as well. Reject the temptations that you will face, because there will be more. It will be a little bit harder than it was previously. There's going to be more things to do. You're going to be in a new place with new problems, but you can overcome those problems. You can overcome the obstacles that will be faced, that you will be faced with. Avoid the new temptations. Obey God and prosper instead. Deuteronomy chapter 8 continues. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8 kind of talks about the flip side. It talks about the positives. You're going to go into this place and you're going to prosper. But when you do, do not fall away because of the good things that you will face. Uh, read with me. Chapter 8, um, chapter 8, verses 1 through 6, and then we'll jump around and hit a couple other verses as well. Chapter 8, verses 1 through 6. All the commandments that I am commanding you today, you shall be careful to do, that you might live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swore to give your forefathers. You shall remember all the way which the Lord your God has led you in the wilderness these 40 years, that he might humble you, testing you, to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. He humbled you and let you be hungry and fed you manna, when you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you understand that a man does not live by bread alone, but a man lives by everything that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. Your clothing did not wear out on you. you did, your foot did not swell over those 40 years. Thus, you are to know in your heart that the Lord your God was disciplining you as a man disciplines his son. Therefore, you shall keep, his commandments, keep the commandments of the Lord to walk in his ways and fear him. Uh, jump to, to verse 11 and 11 through 14. But beware that you do not forget the Lord your God, not keeping his commandments and his ordinances and his statutes which I am commanding you today. Otherwise, when you have eaten and are satisfied, and you have built good houses, and you have lived in them, and when your herds and your flocks have multiplied, and your silver and your gold has multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, then your heart will become proud, and you will forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt and into the house of slavery. Verses 18 through 20. You shall remember the Lord your God. It is he who gives you the power to make wealth, that he might confirm his covenant which he swore to your fathers, as it is this day. And he shall come about, and it shall come about, that if you ever forget the Lord your God and go after other gods to serve them and worship him, that I testify against you today that you will surely perish. Like the nations that the Lord has made to perish before you, so you shall perish, because you did not listen to the voice of the Lord your God. It's a little bit wordy, but essentially what God is saying is, first of all, remember how he's blessed you already. Remember how you have already been made to prosper. Uh, God, through these 40 years where the Israelites have been in the wilderness, has blessed them continually. He's given them bread to eat. He's given them water to drink. Their clothes did not wear out and their feet did not swell. God has been the source of prosperity in their lives already. And he's about to make their lives even better. They're going to go into the land of Canaan and they're going to take it over. They're going to conquer. Their flocks are going to increase. Their golden wealth is going to increase. Things are going to go good for them. But when it goes good for them, this is Moses' This is Moses' warning for when it goes well for them. When it goes well, do not forget that God has been the source of all of this. It wasn't you, it was, it was God. God has prospered you. You have done God's will, and you have done work in order to receive these things, but it is God who has prospered you. 
So don't forget that. And if you do forget that, recognize that's when God's going to stop prospering you. You might have all this physical wealth, but you're going to lose what God has truly given you, which is what really matters. So once again, we're going to find what was true for them is true for us as well. As you go out, I hope and I pray that you will find great success in whatever you do. I think you've found great success in what you've done so far, right? You've graduated. You've succeeded. You've made great achievements already. And I hope and I pray that you will continue to achieve great things. I hope that God works through you mightily and that great things happen in your life. And when they do, I hope you do not lose sight of God. Remember God. Remember to keep his commandments, to be obedient, and to allow him to let you prosper. Don't turn away from God when things go good. Remember God when things go good. Um, God is good, and God wants good things for you. But don't fall into the trap of ignoring God in the good times. Chapters 9 and 10, I'm looping, I'm looping together, lumping together. Chapters 9 and 10, Moses is going to be reminding Israel of how they have failed. Because they have failed pretty tremendously. Throughout those 40 years in the wilderness, uh, if you'll remember when Moses went up to the mountain Hebron, at Hebron to get the Ten Commandments, he comes back down to find Israel has created the golden calf, that idol. They have turned away from God and turned to idolatry, just like that. And this is a great failure. God's wrath almost destroys the Israelites. It's only because Moses intercedes that Israel is saved. And that's essentially what chapter 9 is about. Chapter 10 talks about how Moses intercedes and how God forgives and God remains faithful. They have failed tremendously. They have turned away from God, and yet that wasn't the end. Moses interceded, God forgave, and they were able to continue to be God's people. Now, 40 years later, they are obedient to God and they are prospering. And that's a great lesson for us. Uh, let's read chapter 10. Nope, that's chapter 12. Chapter 10, verses 20 through 22, just the very end of the passage. You shall fear the Lord your God, you shall serve him, and you shall cling to him. You shall swear by his name, these great and awesome, you shall swear by his name. He is your praise, and he is your God, who has done these great and awesome things for you, which your eyes have seen. Your fathers went down to Egypt, 70 people, and now the Lord your God has made you as numerous as the stars in heaven. That's how Moses wraps up the section in which he's chastising them for their failures. He wraps up the section, not saying it, it's, it's all over, this is the end, he, but by saying, you have been returned to your God. God has accepted you. Fear God, praise God, cling to God, swear by his name. You can return to God even if you have left him. And so, that's going to be true for you graduates as well. Um, the sad truth is, there's a real possibility you might fall away to some of these temptations that you're facing. In this world, there's lots of temptation, there's lots of things, there's lots of idols that might lead you astray. Um, and you are human. I'd hate to tell you the truth, but the truth is, all man has fallen short. All man has gone astray. And so there's a real possibility that you, like most people, are going to mess up. But when you do, that is that turning point. Uh, when you miss up, will you return to God again and become obedient, or will you truly turn away? When you mess up, what are you going to do? God is not happy when you mess up. But God rejoices when you return to him. And you always have that opportunity, and you always have that ability to return to him. No matter where you go and what you do, you can return to God, and you can find that forgiveness, and you can return to obedience and God will forgive you. And God will continue to prosper you on top of that. You can be like Israel. Return to God, follow his commandments. And if you return to God, he will accept you and he will allow you to continue to prosper. All right. Chapter 11. Chapter 11, last chapter. And chapter 11 really does serve as that sort of conclusion. Moses is going to continue to talk about the laws that they are expected to talk about. But here in chapter 11, Moses returns to that thesis. Obey God and prosper. And that's how we're going to conclude today's lesson. Just that reminder. Obey God and prosper. Uh, chapter 11, verses 8 and 9. That's 9 and 9. You shall therefore keep every commandment which I am commanding you today, that you might be strong, you might go in and possess the land in which you are about to cross to possess. 
so that you may prolong your days on the land which the Lord has sworn your fathers to give them and to their descendants a land that is flowing with milk and honey. Now jump down to 18 through 23. You shall therefore impress these words of mine upon your hearts and on your souls. You shall bind them as a sign on your hands and they shall be on the fronts of your foreheads. You shall teach them to your sons, talking to them when you sit in your house and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you rise up. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates so that your days and the days of your sons might be multiplied in this land which the Lord has sworn to your fathers to give them, as long as the heavens remain above the earth. For if you are careful to keep all of his commandments, which I am commanding to you, to love the Lord your God and to walk in all of his ways and to hold fast to him, then the Lord will drive out these nations from before you, and he will dispose these nations that are greater and mightier than you. You'll notice that's the same words we started with back in chapter 6. It's, it's repeating the Shema in some ways. It's, it's a bookend. And what he's saying, what this bookend is, is, is our thesis. Obey God and prosper. Uh, Moses is laying it down all on the line, right? Israel is about to go. They're about to enter into this promised land, enter into something new. And they have the option. They have the choice. Obey God and prosper or reject God and fail. And what you're going to face, you, you all are going to be faced with that same opportunity not just now at graduation, but the rest of your lives, to be honest. Because graduation is not the end. Graduation, in many ways, is the beginning. Uh, ten years from now, what, what are you doing? You're probably looking at new jobs. You're probably looking at kids. You're probably looking at new things in your life. Twenty years from now, what are you looking at? Probably more kids, probably older kids, probably teenagers. Uh, Thirty years from now, you're looking at kids leaving. You're looking at becoming empty nesters. You're looking at different things. Uh, 45, 50 years from now, you're looking at retirement. You're looking at more changes. Change will always happen. You will always be entering into something new in your life. And at any given point, you need to keep these decisions clear. Are you going to choose to be obedient? Are you going to choose to let God prosper you? Or are you going to reject what he has to say? Will you obey God or will you turn away from him? And so that is how we are going to close. This is a simple application. It's a simple process. Choose to obey God. Uh, choose to remember the scriptures that you have grown up with. Choose to remember as you, have been, as you have been taught. Because you have been taught. You have been successful. You're here. And we are so glad that you are here. Choose to remember what you have been taught. Choose to reject those idols that you are going to be faced with. Choose to reject the temptations of the world as you go out. Whatever you are faced with, choose to reject the evil and choose to remember God. Choose to obey God. And if you get lost, if you do fall away, don't forget you can always come back. God is here to receive you, forgive you, and to prosper you if you return to him and you become obedient. So the choice is yours. Will you follow God and will you prosper? I hope you do. And that, that is my hope and my, pr my prayer for every one of you graduates. And it's true for everybody else in this audience. Everybody else in this auditorium. All of you are entering into something new. Uh, maybe some of you are in that in-between period where you're not entering into something new quite yet, but you've got, you will. There's always something new coming at any given opportunity. Obey God and allow him to prosper you as you enter into anything new. So if you have opportunity and if you have need right now, this is an opportunity. To return to God if you need to. Find a new path if you need to. If there is any need you have to, uh, this morning, please come forward now as we stand and we sing. Jesus is calling.